welcome to the final two races of the 2014 season of the Audi R8 LMS Cup. We're coming live from the Yas Marina F1 circuit here in Abu Dhabi. The circuit was opening October 2009 and has 21 corners. The circuit twists through the Yas Island of the Abu Dhabi coast, passing by the marina and through the Yas Viceroy Abu Dhabi Hotel. The length of the circuit is 5.5 kilometers and for the very first time in the history of the Audi R8 LMS Cup. It will be a night race. This F1 circuit was built with permanent lighting system and is also the largest permanent sports venue lighting uh, project in the world. And I'm sure we're about to experience another fantastic race in the making. But before all the cars move over the gray, now it's our time to say hi to our commentator. Thank you very much, Sophie. Hello and welcome to the Audi R8 LMS Cup season finale. After 10 exciting races across Asia, the 2014 championship comes down to the wire and will be decided right here at the Yas Marina circuit in Abu Dhabi. One championship, two races, four contenders. That is the theme of the final race weekend. It's also a historic event for the series as it goes racing, as you can tell, at night for the very first time. The Yas Marina circuit is no stranger to hosting races after dark and is no stranger to crowning champions. Let's have a lovely look at this circuit and as you can tell it's well lit up at night. It's beautifully designed and the track actually goes right through this building which is the Viceroy Hotel right next to the circuit. Let's have a quick look at the, the Yas Marina circuit itself. 21 corners the drivers will have to negotiate, 5.554 kilometers, 13 left turns, 8 right turns, and according to Rachel Fry, she was saying how challenging this circuit is going to be. It's a beautiful night to go racing, and as you can see, the cars are already making their way to the start grid. And as we can see, the drivers are slowly making their preparations to begin the first race of the season. Let's have a look now at a recap of rounds 9 and 10 from the WEC Shanghai Race Week. One title, two races, four contenders. That's the situation heading into the final race weekend of the year in what's been another fiercely competitive season. At the top of the standings sits Alex Young, just seven points ahead of Andre Kuto. Both have four wins this year, and interestingly, all Andre's wins have come on the first race of each weekend in rounds three, five, seven, and nine, but all of Alex's have come on the second race of the weekend in rounds two, four, eight, and 10. But both have also had their issues, with Young involved in a multi-car pileup in Fuji, as well as this spin in front of his home fans in Malaysia. While Kuto was taken out in the opening race of the season and also struggled in Japan. Behind those two comes Swiss driver Rahel Frey, who is yet to win a race this year, but her consistency has seen her finish outside the top five on just two occasions, and she's had four podium finishes. Frankie Chung can also still take the title, and race wins in rounds one and six show he's got the speed to do it when he's on his game. Time is running out for these drivers to make their move, but it's sure to be a nail-biting finish. One title, two races, four contenders. It's going to be a very special racing weekend indeed. A very interesting element for any global sports event, and particularly motor racing, is the role of race operations. We caught up with the people involved behind the scenes for this insight into the Audi R8 LMS Cup. Dennis Carter, Audi R8 race director. My partner in crime is Tony Scott Andrews, who's the series steward. That's me. I am the permanent steward for Audi R8. To make a race run successfully and to run well, there are lots of people behind the scene. There's obviously all of the marshals all around the circuit and on the start line and in the pit lane. Out on the circuit, you have flag marshals uh, giving the flag signals to the drivers so the drivers know what to expect in front of them. You then have um, incident marshals that deal with cars that are stranded or anything that happens out on circuit. Observers that report back to race control anything that's going on. Plus all of the medical staff 
uh, and all of the people in the pit lane and all of the people on the start line. So lots and lots of people that go to make up a very safe and hopefully a very secure weekend. It's a, it's a cast of thousands. We, we do a lot, but one of us does more than Dennis does. <laughs> the safety car is an Audi R8 V10 engine. Very powerful. The same is that you can buy in 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 your garage, in your your Audi garage. It's the same with the same tires as uh, we used on the road. We use the safety car in two ways. We use the safety car at the start of a race, where it will run round the circuit between 70 and 90 kilometres an hour. And then as we approach the start, I try and slow it down. And once we've got the cars in order, the safety car then pulls off and leaves them to take the start on its, on their own. When we then decide to deploy a safety car during a race, we will inform the drivers by flags and, and boards that the safety car is coming onto track. We'll send the safety car out. We'll then normally try and run the safety car, not at race pace, but fairly fast, except for through the area where the incident is that's caused the safety car in the first place. Once we've cleared up the incident, then we inform the drivers that the safety car is coming in by turning the lights off. So they will know the moment the lights go off on the safety car that at the end of that lap it's going to pull off and come in. And that's basically how a safety car works. The yellow flag is probably the most commonly used flag. Um, that's the flag that uh, warns the drivers there's danger ahead or, or there's a problem ahead. They should slow down and be prepared to stop. If they see a blue flag it means there's a car trying to overtake them. And they should uh, be aware of that. If they see a, a red and white flag, it means a slippery surface. A green flag means the track is clear. And obviously the one they all want to see is the checkered flag, which means the race is finished. He has lots of flags. I have only one. I have the black flag. Because it's the end of the driver's race. He has to come in and stop. If the race director picks something up, he wants us to investigate. And we will interview the drivers, uh, look at video evidence. There's in-car video footage. There's circuit CCTV footage and we make a decision based on the evidence we have, and hopefully the right one. I determine whether an offence has been committed. If I believe it has, then I give it to my learned friend here, who deliberates for hours and hours and hours and then makes a decision. He's the policeman, I'm the judge, I suppose. Who do you think can do the better job? It, we both have an important job to do. Um, obviously, I can't say it's me, but it would be. Welcome Hello. to the show. What an incredible season has been for the Audi REL MS Cup and we're about to enjoy a history in the making with the first night race. So how do you think the drivers and teams prepare for this very special night race? I think, um, you know, night race is also is always something really, really special for the drivers, but also for the teams. Um, you have obviously uh, the uh, um, asphalt, so downstairs a little bit cooler. Yeah, uh, We are here in Abu Dhabi, so it's uh, still quite warm. Yeah? But uh, obviously concerning, um, they need to adjust their eyes a little bit because it's uh, a little bit, the vision is a little bit darker. Um, and uh, I think a night race, if you see, uh, is a very, very long day. So uh, now everything comes together on this small little piece where they really have to race now. Um, so it's mentally also, they have to focus very much on the night race. So I'm very much looking forward to it. I think all the drivers also, and it uh, will be a fabulous race. Yeah. Thank you so much, Rene, and I'm looking forward to see what kind of effect this the night race can affect the performance of different drivers. And back to the theme, during the whole 2014 season, the Audi RE LMS Cup has raced in five different countries and at the cream of Asian motorsport venues. And last time out in Shanghai, uh, the 24 Hours of Le Mans winning Audi team and the Audi RE LMS Cup has also raced at the same venue. So it was a very important occasion in the history of the Audi RALMS Cup Series. Here's a short video explaining more. The basic idea of WEC is a very high technology driven series where you are running with cars uh, that are really the pinnacle of technology on race cars, where we are racing with our R18 e-tron Quattro. And it's a, a hybrid car powered by a diesel engine with an additional hybrid system on the front axle that uses recuperated energy from braking into additional acceleration. Here, Shanghai, 
because of the importance of the market for Audi, it was important for us that WEC comes to the Shanghai racetrack to have a race here. And from the very beginning, we always tried to combine it with the R8 LMS Cup. I see there the synergies and the link between the WEC and the Audi R8 LMS Cup. Within Audi Sport Customer Racing Asia, we are actually supporting also teams participating during Asian-wide uh, series, for example, uh, within the GT Asia. It's very nice to be here in Shanghai, great racetrack, it's a very fantastic facility. We try to inspire young kids into racing here uh, and maybe become champions like we are or we are trying to be this year potential drivers which are being developed in Asia here and maybe racing one day also in Europe. Hopefully we can bring a good show and uh, get enthusiasm from the, the Chinese fans and show them racing so they can build more and more racing culture for the future. Welcome to the Audi R8 LMS Cup season finale. It is the penultimate race of the season happening under the spotlights here at the Yas Marina circuit. And the cars are all in position on the grid. Let's take a quick look at how they line up. Starting on a pole position, claiming his fifth of the se season is Andre Kuto. Right next to him, though, is the championship leader at the moment, Alex Jung, in second. Machi Lee is in third, and he carries a 40 kilogram weight ballast. Matt Solomon has his best qualifying session with eighth. And further down the grid, we've got Stephen Lin there in 11th position. And we've got also plenty more drivers who make up this grid as we go into the final round of the season. They are currently making their way around the grid. And as you can see, a very important element for them to get used to is driving at night. We're riding on board here with Machi Lee. He's going to be starting on third from the grid. It's going to be very interesting to see how they get off and how they make their way down into turn one. The lighting system here at the Abu Dhabi circuit is world class indeed. It's the same lighting system that they apply at the La Salle International Circuit when MotoGP go racing. This is of course a permanent lighting track and it is designed so that the drivers actually feel like they're actually racing in sunlight. But it is, is of course at night and there is a big difference, the biggest being the track temperature. It is significantly different from what it was during qualifying. During the day, of course, when they qualified at 11 o'clock this morning, track temperatures were, were about 33 degrees Celsius. Right now, it's about 27 degrees Celsius. So it should play an effect in how the drivers actually handle their cars going into this 15 lap race. Let's take a look at the circuit that they will be racing on, 21 corners in total. It is a very challenging circuit according to Andre Kuto. A very fast first section, long straights between turns seven and eight. As you can see there, cars reaching up to 270 kilometers per hour. It's a very technical end towards getting back to the start finish line. 19 drivers take to the starting grid to actually start this race. And as you can see, it's beautiful, beautiful conditions right here at the Yas Marina circuit. There will be pressure on Andre Kuto and Alex Jung. They are the main contenders for the championship. Just six points separate them going into this first race weekend. And as you can see on board there, trying to warm up his tires, that is Marchi Lee trying to get the temperatures, trying to make sure that everything is all set as they take on that rolling start in just a few minutes' time. They're just making their way around the circuit. All of them are at about turn 17 right now, and they are going to be going right past the Viceroy Hotel right there in the blue, which you can see in the background. It's a brilliant part of the track. This is where it gets really tight. This is where it gets really tricky, and they really have to needle their way through this section of the circuit. Safety cars leading them around. Andre Kuto is going to be in charge of leading this pack to the first turn. The drivers will soon see a two-by-two two formation board. They'll have to line up two-by-two, two, get into perfect formation, 
and hold their position as they roll their way to the start line. If the starter's happy, he'll give them the green light and they're off racing. If not, they'll set off on another formation lap to try and get it right the second time round. Here we see Andre Couto. I was asking him just how pressured he felt coming into this race weekend. And his answer was, actually, the pressure's on Alex. He's leading the championship. I've got nothing to lose. I wonder whether he'll apply that going into turn one. He certainly needs to finish ahead of Alex, and he certainly needs to pick up valuable points. He's got the benefit of having no weight ballast. Alex carries 60 additional kilos from winning the last race out. Marchi Lee in third position carries 40 kilos for finishing second last time out. And Rachel Fry in the green 66 car. She carries 20 kilos for being on the podium in third place last time out in China. As cars make their way to the start finish line, they're coming up, forming, and they are racing. Green lights, and off we go. The penultimate race gets underway. Andre Kuto makes it to the first corner. Alex Yu tucks it right behind him, and it is Matt Solomon who's made a fantastic start into third place, just moving up one place, nicking it off Marchili, who had that 40 kilogram weight penalty. We are now riding on board, and as you can see, it's really tight into the first few corners as they make their way up into turn two, coming into the tight hairpin just before the start of uh, the long straight. They, of course, have the push to pass button, and they can use that 10 times anytime during the race. It gives them an additional 50 horsepower, and you can be sure some of them are going to be applying it right now down this long, long straight. For 19 seconds, they will be on full throttle it's about 1.4 kilometers in total as, as Andre Couto leads the way at the moment and the field slowly there beginning to spread out. Andre Couto breaking hard. Alex Jung just having a look on the inside there. Then it's Marcelli who's now reclaimed third place. Matt Solomon in fourth. Rahel Fry in fifth. And we've got Kung Fu Chen in sixth place. Fantastic that start there by all the drivers. Coming down now into another heavy braking area. This is turn 11. The leaders go into turn 11. Slowly, the field is slowly spreading out. But just there, we have driving here in the series for the first time, Khalid Al-Kubashi in car 43, just making up a position there. He, of course, has phenomenal track knowledge, having raced at this circuit many, many times. For most of the drivers, they're racing here for the first time. It's apart from Adli Fung and Alex Ao. So they've had to really familiarize themselves with this track. But Andre Kutu had no problem at all. He leads the pack at the moment. Alex Jung looking comfortable in second place, but he is slowly being chased by Marchi Lee and Matt Solomon right behind him. Coming around to finish the first lap, it is Andre Kuto leads by 1.129 seconds. And then it is Matt Solomon who's now in third place. Kung Fu Chen is in fourth. And Marchi Lee has dropped down together with Rahel Fry. She's in sixth. Marchi's in fifth. Sun Jin's in seventh. And Keo Yu's in eighth place. Fantastic start to the penultimate race of the season. It's looking good for Andre Kuto. He needs the points. He needs to get closer to Alex. He needs to overtake him in the championship. And right now, he's on course to achieving that. Coming around the hairpin, it's extremely crucial for the drivers to get the exit of turn seven spot on because it depends how hard they can actually get onto the throttle. They need, it's a long straight, so they need as much time on full throttle and of course they've got the push to pass Andre Kuto looking comfortable there in the lead 1.29 seconds is his gap at the moment from Alex Yo phenomenal racing indeed as they make it their way around the track riding on board and you can just see how conditions are this is one part of the track where it's flat out another part where they reach up to 250 kilometers per hour and then just before the turn 11 it's heartbreaking, but right now it's flat out, full throttle, going into the back straight. And then right here, cars breaking down from 250 kilometers per hour to 70 kilometers per hour. A lot of work on the brakes and a lot of toll on the drivers indeed as they go round once again.
race leader Andre Kuto seems to have things under control. He doesn't have the advantage of holding the extra weight. Alex, on the other hand, will have to try and battle hard and maintain his position. 60 kilos has an impact on the racing tires. They do have plenty of opportunity to acclimatize themselves with the circuit. But of course, you know, they've got one set of tires. They had to make it last for qualifying this race and of course the next race. So they'll have that on mind. This is Andre Kucho going past. He's just opened up a slightly bigger gap to Alex Young. The gap now is 1.4 seconds. And right behind that, Matt Solomon is on course for his better, his best position of finish of the season so far as the team looks on. Riding on board now as the cars make their way. Andre Kucho gets the power down and he powers down that back straight. 1.4 kilometers. Alex Young follows him, followed by Matt Solomon, Kong Fu Chen, Machi Lee, Rahel Fry, Sun Chen, Keo Yu, Adli Fung's in ninth place, Jeffrey Lee's in 10th, and Khalid Al Kobashi in 11th place. Smooth sailing for Andre Kuto so far as Rahel Fry gets really close to Marchi Lee. Having a look down there just on the inside on the braking area. Now that's one place where we can expect to see more overtaking as drivers try and outbreak the competition and get the get the racing line into the turn. I was asking Alex Young earlier today. Oh, as we see that three cars first going in there. And we have a little bit of contact there by the looks of it. There was a bit of contact, bit of sideways movement, but it seems like the cars have managed to continue. That certainly is not the way, fastest way around the race circuit. Andre Kuto leads from Alex Young. Matt Solomon in third. Kung Fu Chen in fourth place. And Andre Kuto is a very experienced driver. He has had four victories to season to date in this season. And they've all come coincidentally in the first race of the weekend. He won the first race in Fuji. He won the first race at Sepang. And he won the first races at Shanghai. Both times out. And he so far is set on course to completing that. He's opened up a gap after three laps. 2.37 seconds from Alex Young. Matt Solomon is sitting pretty in third place. 3.4 seconds behind Alex Young. Kung Fu Chen maintains his fourth place. 4.6 seconds behind. Rahel Fry has made a place up on Machi Lee. She is riding in fifth place at the moment. Machi Lee's dropped down to sixth. That is Adli Fong. Followed by Keo Yu, Jeffrey Lee, and Khaled Al Kobashi. Three laps into this race, and you can just see the gap there as Andre Kuto comes up to the start back straights. And that is car number 15, Shun Jun. He looks to be out. We saw contact earlier just now, and Shun Jun seems to be out definitely. He's parked it in the garage after qualifying seventh. That must be very, very disappointing for him. Could have been a very good day out for him, but unfortunately, he's the first retirement from the first race we have this weekend as Andre Kuto leads from Alex Young. And we're it's quite tricky conditions here at night, as I can say, the drivers really add. Oh, that's Rahel Fry just using the track and then some. She's fortunate enough that there's plenty of runoff area that she can actually recover her recover herself that was the end of turn eight just probably breaking a bit too late trying to find the limit and probably going a bit past the limit lucky for her no barriers or no gravel trap to greet her just plenty of runoff as andre kuto leads comfortably from the front he comes around turn 20 to start lap four So coming across the start finish line to complete four laps of racing, it is Andre Kuto. He leads from Alex Young. 
the gap once again extends to 3.39 seconds. Song Fu Chen has taken a place from Matt Solomon. He's in third place. Matt Solomon's in fourth. Rahel Fry's in fifth place. Marchi Lee's in sixth. Adelie Fong is in seventh across the line. Then it's Keo Yu, Jeffrey Lee, Khalid Al Kabashi, and Alex Ao is in 11th place. Stephen Lin in 12th place. And Stefano Montesi becomes a place to him. It's quite an interesting race here to see what kind of tactics will Alex Jung apply? Will he actually sit back and finish in second place? I was speaking to him earlier and I said, is it going to be damage limitations going into this race? Is this one race where you actually want to sit back and just finish behind Andre? And he said to me, Let's head down to the pits with Sophie, who is speaking now to Shenzhen, who has retired from the race. Um, now, just Sunjin joined me, and uh, he is just off his car. What happened on the track for, for your car? Mm, um, well, I don't know what the um, Korean driver doing. He's just trying to squeeze me into the wall. And uh, after that hairpin, he's still trying to squeeze me as I'm inside, and uh, I have nowhere to go. So he hit me. If, uh, we hit... Uh, in the front and uh, my steering rack is uh, bended so I cannot carry on with the steering rack like this so I just come back. So unfortunately for your situation and back to our commentator to see. Shame that, that his race has come to uh, an end but Andre Kuto leads uh, this race and he is showing no signs of letting up in fact with the benefit of having no extra weight penalties in his car, he is slowly but surely pulling away from Alex Jung. And right behind Alex Jung is Kung Fu Chen in car number 25, who suddenly smells an opportunity. Perhaps he can get closer to Alex Jung. Let's see if the gap has come down. 1.8 seconds separate Alex Jung and Kung Fu Chen. Let's see if he can actually get that down in the next lap. Andre Kuto leads his lap. Alex Jung is in second place. And it's going to come to a position where Alex is going to have to decide whether he wants to finish second or third, he was saying to me. Perhaps he might opt for third because if he does so, he has less weight penalty going into the third and final, uh, into the final race tomorrow. And he thinks that could come into play. It could play an advantage. But let's just see how things pan out. As you can see there, Kung Fu Chen is really closing in on Alex Jung. He is on a flyer at the moment. Andre Kuto sets the fastest lap, 2.12246 seconds. He has just set the fastest lap of the circuit, of the race so far, followed by Alex Jung. And there you can see Kung Fu Chen reeling him in. And then comes Matt Solomon. And that is Rahel Fry. And right behind them is Marchi Lee, followed by Adli Fong. Those two are very close indeed. And then it is K.O.U. And riding on board with Jinting at the moment as he makes his way up the back. That is between turn 10 and turn 11. He's going to be on full throttle for about 14 seconds before he breaks hard right about now as he makes his way into turn 11 and then followed by a very, very tricky section, which most of the drivers say they have a lot of trouble just finding their way around the third sector of the circuit. That is the part where they actually have to drive very, very precisely. But I spoke to Alex Young and I said, where is the lap time going to come from? And he said, it's predominantly going to come from the third sector of the lap. You have to be precise. It's extremely important. You don't overdrive the car and you just make your way through that sector as fast as you can. This man has had no problems whatsoever. Andre Kuto in car number 10, he is comfortably in the lead, pulling up yet another gap. The gap opens to 4.666 seconds from Alex Jung. Then it is Kung Fu Chen, who is indeed chasing down Alex Jung, and he has to manage to narrow the gap to under one second. So just one second separates second and third place. Matt Solomon is slowly falling off the leading pack. 
and then it is Rachel Frey Fry in fifth place, followed by Machi Lee, Adli Fong, KOU, Jeffrey Lee's in ninth place, and Khalid Al Kubashi is in tenth place. Andre Kuto in complete control. He is extremely confident going into this weekend. When I spoke to him earlier about his chances for the championship, he said he feels good, he feels confident, he doesn't feel that pressure's on him. As we can see, Alex Jung and Kung Fu Chen really getting close together out there on track. Cars now heading down the back straight. Another area where they can use the push to path button. Will Alex start using it to defend his position or will he allow Kung Fu Chen through? That remains to be seen. As this race progresses, six laps in of 11 more to go. As the mechanics watch on, this is a sprint race, of course. There are no pit stops, there are no refueling. So the mechanics have done their jobs. They've got the cars to the start line. They're fired up, they're racing. They can put their feet up and actually sit back and enjoy and watch the action as it unfolds. Andre Couto leads from Alex Jung, a 4.666 second lead. With every lap that goes by, Andre manages to just pull away ahead. And we've got another driver who's come into the... It's Stephen Lin, I believe. He's come into the pits, and that looks like the end of the race for Stephen Lin. Uh, that is a huge blow for him. He has, of course, wrapped up the amateur championship, but he will go no further in this race. Stephen Lin, who started the race in 11th place. He's out of the race. He's going to go no further. Absolutely disappointing indeed. Definitely not the way he wanted to end the race. But obviously we'll find out if the problems are, are with his car and what can be done about it before tomorrow's race. For now though, back on track. We've got a race lead happening and we've got a swapping of positions. Kung Fu Chen has managed to snatch second place from Alex Jung, who's fallen down to third. I told you Kung Fu Chen was closing in on him. He definitely looked faster. He has the benefit, of course, of having no weight ballast. Don't forget, Alex, having won the last race out, starts this race with an extra 60 kilograms in his car. So he has had, had to carry that around, and that's, of course, going to have an effect on his tyres. And one thing he's very cognizant about is saving his tyres for the more important race three. So now can Alex Jung hold on to third position? I don't think he can afford to fall any further down the order if he wants to keep his championship hopes very much alive going into race two. Andre Kuto leads. Kung Fu Chen's in second place. Alex Jung third. Matt Solomon is third. Rahel Fry has fallen off the back of Matt Solomon for a bit. It's Machi Lee now in sixth place. Adli Fung in seventh. KOU in eighth. Jeffrey Lee in seventh. And Khalid Al Kubashi in tenth place. Andre Couto has had quite a season indeed. He's been on the podium numerous times in the 10 races we've had so far. Six podiums to his name, four times he's won the race. It's been a very strong season for him, but nonetheless, he has had two retirements to his name. Andre Couto making his way round the track. He's eight laps in. Kung Fu Chen in second place, Alex Jung in third. We, are, we saw earlier on Stephen Lin retiring from this race. Let's go to Sophie in the pit lane who's caught hold of him. Join me now is Stephen Lin and I can smell very, uh, bad gas from his car. So what happened out there on the track for your car? I don't know exactly what happens on the straight. The car's done on brake and afterwards I restart the car. The car's drive finally and uh, I don't know what's the the clutch, the gear, I have no clue. It's such an unfortunate occasion for you, and yeah. you didn't collect points even though you already win the, the past five consecutive amateur class winner, and good luck for the next race. Thank you very much. And back to our commentator. Thank you very much, Sophie. 
Shame there for Stephen Lin. Obviously disappointed. It's a penultimate race of the season. No driver likes to hang up his helmet before the checkered flag. But he had no choice. Car troubles there ending his race. Leading this race though is Andre Couto and there he is in vision right now. Car number 10, the lovely purple. Behind him is second place man Kung Fu Chen. And then comes Alex Jung in third place. And Matt Solomon is creeping closer to Alex Jung. Followed by Rachel Fry in fifth place. And here's a quick look at Stephen Lin's car number 33. He's enjoyed plenty of victories coming into this race. But today, he ends slightly earlier than anticipated. Back on track. It's racing at full speed going into the back part of the track. Andre Couto is looking comfortable indeed. And I do wonder exactly what he must be thinking. Because you do, do remember that the fastest lap of this race will determine the starting grid positions for race two. So at some point, all drivers are going to have to start thinking about exactly when they want to strategize setting a very fast lap that will determine their grid position for the second and final race of the season. Andre is going to be fully aware that he will have a 60 kilogram penalty if things stay as it is, because if he wins this race, there'll be an extra 60 kilograms going into the race. So he wants as big as an advantage as possible. And he'll obviously want to start from pole position. So I can only imagine he will only be aiming to set the fastest lap of the race because he will want that pole position place. With an extra 60 kilograms, it certainly makes a difference, not only in terms of the top speed that the cars can achieve, but as I was talking to Alex Young, he was telling me it affects the handling of the car. It affects the way they brake going into the corners. And uh, he felt the full weight of his ballast in Fuji when he had won the previous round and he carried a 60 kilogram weight going into the first race at Fuji. Coming into one of the hairpins, he braked a bit too late and unfortunately got caught out and he managed, he ended up retiring from that race because he crashed into a few cards. So not the best way for Alex Jung to get a hold of the ballast, but that's exactly what happened to him in Fuji. He will and seems to be able to avoid that this time around as he makes his way around the circuit. Nine laps of racing completed. Andre Couto leads from Kung Fu Chen. Then it's Alex Jung, Matt Solomon. That's the gap to watch. Who's gonna be the last person to claim the last podium position? Will it be Alex Jung? Will it be Matt Solomon? We are about to find out. That's, gap. That's one gap that we're gonna have to watch. Kung Fu Chen is eight seconds behind Andre Couto. It's gonna take a mammoth effort for him to reel Andre in. Andre Couto comes round the final corner to start yet another lap. Let's just have a look at the timings now. Andre Couto goes 10 laps in the bag for him. Five more to go. He's two thirds on his way to victory here. And I'm sure he's slowly beginning to plan his fast lap. Second place is Kung Fu Chen. Then is Alex Jung who right now has a 1.7 second buffer between him and Matt Solomon. Then it's Rahel Fry, followed by Adli Fung, and Machi Lee in sixth place. And in eighth place is KOU, Jeffrey Lee is in ninth, Khaled Al Kubashi is in tenth place. It is the first time the Audi R8 LMS Cup has come to Abu Dhabi. So a lot of the drivers have had to familiarize themselves with racing at this track. Only two of them have race experience so far, and that would be Alex, Alex Wu and it would be Adli Fong, our reigning champion in the car number 68. Currently, Adli is sitting in sixth place. In fact, Adli has not only raced here in GP3, he's also done a GP2 test here. And most recently, during the last Formula One weekend here in Abu Dhabi, Adli Fong had the opportunity to step into Adrian Sutil's Sauber and went out for free practice one. 
So he completed 18 flying laps, 25 laps in total, and I asked him just how did that feel, and he said it was the most mind-blowing experience that he has ever had. Absolutely phenomenal, he said. Um, it was driving a Formula One track around the Yas Marina circuit. He thoroughly enjoyed it and thoroughly, thoroughly took full advantage of it. He is putting his track knowledge to use at the moment, riding in sixth place. Today, he is going to be hoping to set a very strong time to allow him the opportunity to actually start race two from a much better position. Adli Fung, of course, is going to have to relinquish his title, having won last year's championship. He hasn't had the best of seasons this year. It didn't start well at all for him. He had a retirement in Korea and another retirement in Sepang and retired the last time out in Shanghai. And it just hasn't come together. And I did ask him exactly what the issues were. And there have been new changes to the regulation. And he said perhaps he hasn't quite come into the way to strategize using the push to pass buttons during a race. He feels that is one thing that he feels he could improve on. And he has been trying to improve on as the season goes by. It's a new technology introduced this season. It gives the driver an additional 50 horsepower boost and they'll use it right now in a position like this down the start finish line where they have an opportunity to add another 50 horsepower. These 5.2 liter V10 engines already have 560 horsepower so that gives it a 610 with the push to pass button and it stays on for 15 seconds each time they use it as long as they stay on full throttle and they can use it 10 times in race one and eight times in race through two. So it's quite a tactical thing. It definitely adds a little element to the drivers. They've really got to think, do they want to use it to attack? Do they want to use it to defend? Do they use them all up at the start of the race or do they actually wait to the end to catch? So the drivers not only have to think and concentrate on the driving, they've actually also got to figure out when is the most opportune time to use the push to pass button. Eleven laps of racing completed. Andre Kutos on lap 12 at the moment almost finishing that lap and we've got three cars really really bunched up together for second third and fourth it's still really really close any of them could make their way onto the podium who is it gonna be as Andre Kuto goes to comes across the start to finish line he has finished 12 laps so far leading this race comfortably and he is on course to pick up his fifth race win of the season Andre Kuto is 11, or make that 12 seconds behind him is Kung Fu Chen, followed by Alex Jung, who's 0.6 seconds behind, who's just maintaining that gap behind Matt Solomon. 1.7 seconds separates Alex and Matt Solomon. It's extremely important for Alex to finish on the podium. He doesn't want to drop too far down the points from, uh, from Andre Kuto. And car 27 makes its way into the pits, and that looks like game over for Zhen Ting. He is going to be parking and finishing his race slightly earlier than anticipated into the pits. That's actually Marchi Lee, I beg your pardon, who's actually come through the into the pit lane. Marchi Lee, car number nine, who started this race in third place with a 40 kilogram ballast, obviously facing some issues and has decided to come into into the pit lane finishing his race early i must say though it's an early finish for him i'm just wondering whether he's actually made a tactical deficient here whether he's actually made a tactical tactical decision to come into the pit lane has he felt that he set the fastest lap of the race or maybe he thinks he's already set the fastest lap that he can possibly set and he wants to preserve his tires going into the final round of the season so I'm not quite sure if Marchi Lee's made a tactical decision or whether he's actually had some issues with his car and we're about to find out I guess shortly when we speak to him but first now leading the race is Andre Kuto Kung Fu Chen is in second Alex Jung and Matt Solomon, the three of them, really, really bunched up together at the moment. But Alex seems to have 
things under control. He has kept that gap to Matt Solomon quite constant. And if you're good with your maths, let me just run you exactly how it has can pan out. Right now, Andre Couto has a six-point deficit to Alex Jung. If things stand as finish as they stand, with Andre in first and Alex in third place, then Andre will have a four-point advantage over Alex Jung going into the final race. But Andre will have a 60 kilogram weight ballast added to his car. Alex, by finishing third, will only have a 20 kilogram weight ballast added to his car. So it will then be a dash to the finish to see who can complete the rate faster. And Alex might just have the upper hand if that is the scenario, because he'll be able to go into the final race with less weight. And he will, his aim will be just to finish ahead of Andre Couto to win the race by at least five points clear. And then he'll be champion of the 2014 R8 LMS season. But we still got a long way to go before we even get to that stage. For now, though, 13 laps completed. And we've got race leader Andre Couto making his way around the circuit quite comfortably. Kung Fu Chen in second place. It is Alex Jung in third place. He is successfully defending his third place from Matt Solomon. Then it's Rahel Fry, followed by Adli Fung in sixth place. Then it's KOU in seventh place. Khalid Al Kubashi is now in eighth place. Jeffrey Lee's in seventh. Stefano Montesi is 11th. Alex Au is 11th. Ashraf Deval is 12th. Jin Ting is 13th. Sun Jin Zhu is 14th. Johnson Huang is 15th. And Jackie Young is 16th. We've got Machi Li, who's been in the pit lane, is in the pit lane. Stephen Lin has retired from this race as Sun Jin as well. Machi is out of this race, but he was saying to me that he certainly wants to try and get a win before the end of this season. He has been racing for about 20 years so far. As we see, that's a car spinning off onto the asphalt runoff there. Plenty of space there to recover and an opportunity to get back on track as we see Andre Couto making his way round the circuit. Machi Lee was saying he definitely does not want to finish this season without a race win. He's got over 20 years of racing experience under his belt and he said to me he has had a race win in every season that he's been competitive so far up until now. So he has his sights on actually winning this race. So let's see, he's got one more chance to do it as we've got a very slow moving car and I fear that was actually Matt Solomon. Could that be Matt Solomon in fourth place who suddenly seems to have lost pace there? Let's have a look there as the cars make their way around the, around the circuit. But I do believe that was Matt Solomon. He might have an issue with his car. That's car number 88. He was running comfortably in fourth place. Seemed to have seem to be on course for one of his better finishes. It would have been his best finish of the season so far. But unfortunately, I think it is Matt Solomon who's dropped out. So we've got Andre Couto making his way around the back of the circuit, coming up to turn 11. He's on the final lap of the race. Then it is Kung Fu Chen, followed by Alex Jung. Rahel Fry is moved up to fourth place. Adley Fung's in fifth place. And then it's KOU in sixth place. And I, and I wasn't mistaken, that is Matt Solomon there. He slows down and drives into the pit lane. I can't help but wonder whether all these are tactical moves by the drivers, whether they're saving their tires for the final race of the season, whether they feel they've set their fastest lap time that they can possibly do, giving them the best opportunity to start the, the second race of the season. Well, all that doesn't matter at the moment. This is one man who's not going to be pulling into the pit lane. He's going to make his way to the checkered flag, coming across to finish the final lap. It's Andre Couto, car number 10, making his way around the final bend. He comes across the finish line, takes the checkered flag. 15 laps later, it is Andre Couto, winner of the first race here in Abu Dhabi. Right behind him, almost 13, maybe 15 seconds. Here comes Kung Fu Chen in second place. And then it is the other championship contender, Alex Jung in third place. 
sealing the podium positions. Rahel Fry makes makes it fourth ahead of Adley Fong. It's a really close finish between those two. And KOU is about to come to take the checkered flag. He finishes in sixth place as Andre Kuto wins this race comfortably from pole position. He has won all his pole positions so far and he continues that winning streak on pole position. Well done, Andre Kuto. Car number 99, Stefano Montesi comes across the line. He finishes in seventh place, still points up for grabs. Jeffrey Lee finishes in eighth place. And in ninth place, it will be the car of Alex Au, I believe, coming across the line. Confirmation, it is Alex uh, Yao Au down the line. And in tenth place, the last points-paying position is about to go to Ashraf Dewal. If he makes his way to the checkered flag, and he does, just, a, just ahead of Genting there, who finishes 11th, just out of the points. He had the perfect view of Ashraf Deval making his way across the finish line to take the final point up for grabs. Brilliant result for Andre Kuto. A maximum of 25 points he has now at the end of this race. He's going to be extremely pleased with that, with that race result. Andre Kuto, 25 points. Alex Jung, I have a feeling he's going to be quite happy with his third place finish. His 20 place, 20 kilogram weight ballast is going to come into play in the second race. And it will be, will be interesting to see how all the times come into play for the second lap. Like I said, it determines their best lap of this race will determine their starting position in race two. And so far, as far as I can tell, it is Andre Kuto who will start from pole position for race two. And then I believe it is Alex Yeo who will start in second place. And after that, it will be Adli Fung in third place and Matt Solomon. Actually, no, Marcelli in fourth place. So from what I can see, quickly looking at the fastest laps, it will be Andre starting on pole position. Alex will be second. Adli Fung in third. Marchi Lee in fourth place. And Matt Solomon is going to be starting fifth. Marchi and Matt Solomon, of course, set their fastest laps. And they've also finished this race early. I do suspect they might have been actually saving their tyres. But right now, it is all eyes and all attention will be on race winner that is Adli Fung there making his way into the pit lane Park Ferme he's going to be parking it there a good solid fifth place for Adli Fung and there is Kung Fu Chen a championship contender nonetheless finishing in second place second place Kung Fu Chen Alex in eighth place, and there it is, Andre Kuto, car number 10. As you can see, the purple car, Andre Kuto, race winner of the first race here at the Yas Marina circuit. It's a brilliant result for the Macanese driver. He's had quite a challenging season, but if there's one thing he has been, it has been consistent, consistent results. Pole positions, he's consistently converted them to race wins. As you can see, they're being congratulated by Rene Koenigberg. Great victory for Andre. Five wins this season. He's happy. He knows what it means. He knows exactly what this means. He takes the championship lead from Alex Jung temporarily until tomorrow, of course. But for now, that's a good reason to celebrate. And celebrate he will indeed. There, there's Alex Young, the championship contenders. It's really going to be a very close battle between these two. We have four contenders mathematically in. We have to check the math after at the end of this race to see exactly who's going to play a part in the championship battle. But it's definitely Alex Young, definitely Andre Kuto. Only four points separate them at the moment. Andre Kuto just ahead of Alex Young. 
and tough race conditions there you can see we are racing at night but as i can see from the drivers they are very sweaty indeed it certainly takes its toll just because the sun isn't shining the temperature isn't very forgiving either here we are at the yas marina circuit just concluded race one of the Audi R8 LMS Cup. Let's head down to Sophie, who's caught hold of the race winner, Andre Couto. Andre, congratulations on the win. And you did what you needed to do. Uh, how confident are you about round 12, giving extra weight to your half tomorrow? Well. Now it's a gamble, right? Uh, we don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if the tire is going to last. I don't know how the car will be. I just know that uh, I'm on it and um, bring it. Just that. Thank you so much and good luck tomorrow. Back to our commentator. Thank you very much, Sophie. Oh yeah, he's definitely said it well there. You can see Andre Couto is definitely very still physically exerting despite racing at night. It's no difference to the drivers. It's still physically demanding. Let's head down to Sophie. She, I believe she's quite busy trying to catch hold of some of the drivers. She's caught hold of second place driver, Frankie Chen. Let's go down to Sophie, who's with Frankie Chen. Hi. Hi, Frankie. Alex held you up for a while. Did that rule your chances of challenging the lead? To be honest, that uh, finishing second is more than I expected. Overall, the weekend, the car wasn't uh, at the best, and I'm not driving at my best. So to finish second, uh, and uh, obviously Alex was also driving very carefully, considering his championship, as well as uh, for Andre. So for to me, that uh, I'm completely now out of the championship, and. Uh, Yes, let's uh, enjoy and uh, tomorrow hope for a uh, happy ending, yes. Hope you get more points tomorrow and back to our commentator. Thank you very much, Sophie. Frankie, they're hoping for a happy ending tomorrow. Definitely, he's got one race to try and notch up a race win and I'm certainly sure that will make him quite happy indeed. He's definitely out of contention, so it's Alex Jung and Andre Couto who are going to be champ battling for this championship let's go down to sophie who's caught hold of alex jung alex by given the 60 kilograms in your car do you think the third place is still win for you absolutely that that's exactly what i wanted um three priorities one to set a fast lap so i can have a good grid for tomorrow I, I think i'm second for the grid that's perfect um two was to finish on the podium which i've managed and three was not to damage the tires I, I hope I haven't damaged the tires. I think they're okay for tomorrow. So hopefully with 20 kilos, I can fight for the win. It's going to be a, fi a more fierce competition tomorrow to see. And back to our commentator. Later, we'll have podium ceremony. Thank you very much. There. I told you, Alex Jung has been thinking with his strategic cap all race weekend. Coming into this race, he knew he had a deficit with a 60 kilograms on his car. And he basically tactically tore this race apart he had three objectives and he managed to achieve all of them he set the fast lap he is starting second he managed to get onto the podium by finishing third he's preserved his tires the best he could and it's been an exciting season of the Audi R8 LMS season so far. 10 races coming up leading into this final round. We've just seen 11, the 11th round. We've got one more to go. As we wait for the podium ceremony, let's have a look back now at some of the action this season so far. Andre Couto maintained his lead at the start of round nine, knowing that a win would take him into the lead in the title race, no matter where his rivals finished. Alex Young and Adley Fong each went up a place into T1 to complete the early top three. Frankie Chung started in second but was squeezed out at the start and was soon down in fifth. But this move on Rahal Fry saw him claw back a place. The battle for the lead and for the championship saw Alex Young go into first place, a 
attacking Kuto despite having 60 kilos added to his car. Kuto also had 40 kilos extra but couldn't defend his position. Reigning champion Adli Fon had showed improved form of late after a slow start to the season. After two failed attempts to go past Andre Kuto into second, he did finally pass the Macanese driver, but went too wide and gave the position straight back. Frankie Chung was poised to take advantage too, but Fong was able to hold on to third. Starting from sixth, Rahal Fry had gone up to fourth, but then slipped back, and Marchi Lee's move here dropped her back down to sixth. Lee, meanwhile, would go on to set the fastest lap of the race. Rahal tried to come right back at Marchi, but as they braked into the corner, Korean driver KOU piled right into the back of Fry, and she was forced to retire a few laps later. KO soldiered on, but would later draw a 30-second penalty for his sins. A dramatic climax to the race saw Andre Kuto make a move on Alex Young, but as he went past, the two cars came together and Young spun out. It was a potentially decisive moment in the title race and allows Kuto to open up a 14-point gap at the top of the standings, ahead of Young, who finished in sixth. Moments later, Kuto crossed to seal the win ahead of Adli Fong and Frankie Chung. Meanwhile, the amateur division saw battles throughout with Ashraf Duval and Johnson Huang in the thick of the action. But Stephen Lin won again and clinched the amateur championship with three races to spare. Could you please talk about your battle with Alex Yong? Yeah, it was a tough battle. Uh, the car was quite good, so... You know, I managed to survive, managed to finish uh, with good points, so this is very good for the championship. Uh, yeah, I like to battle. Marchi Lee was the pole sitter for round 10, and he was away and clear with Alex Young alongside him on the front row. But behind them, there was carnage at the first corner. Andre Kuto appeared to make contact with Frankie Chung, sending both into a spin. KOU and Adelie Fong also got turned around with almost every other driver having to take evasive action of some sort as they negotiated the obstacles. That left Marchi Lee in front, with Alex Young back in the driving seat in the title race, given Kuto's spin. Alex Au and Johnson Huang found themselves in unfamiliar territory in third and fourth, but Huang also spun in the damp, late afternoon conditions. That brought out the safety car as Adli Fong's car was helped from the track, while Frankie Chung was also forced to retire after damage sustained in the first corner incident. On the restart, Rahal Fry, who had started way down in 12th position, passed Stefano Montesi to continue her good progress and moved up into 6th place. Next, the Swiss driver went past both Aidan Wright and Alex Au to go up to 4th. Then came young Hong Kong driver Matt Solomon, and the two had a brief battle on the track before Fry moved up yet another place, this time into third. She was soon hot on the heels of the leaders, with Alex Young pushing Marchi Lee hard at the front. Alex Young then tried a move on the inside of Marchi Lee, and Marchi let him through with more changes in the top three. Rahal Fry then also went past Marchi in a remarkable sequence of action in the shortened race. In final lap drama, Rahal looked to complete a fairy tale race as she attacked Young at the front. Back at the Yas Marina circuit, the Podium ceremony is just about to take place for the first race of the season. Running onto the third step is Alex Jung. He finished third. Very smiley and happy face there. He's got a plan to wrap up the championship this year. And so far, it's coming together. Frankie Cheng is in second place, takes the second spot at the podium. And for the fifth time in the Audi R8 LMS season coming to the top step of the podium accompanied by his daughter. Oh, that's a lovely sight to see. Race winner, Andre Kuto.
that was the national anthem of Macau playing there for Andre Kuto. Been congratulated, he's about to lift the winner's trophy. Race winner, race winner of race 11, Andre Kuto. Very happy man indeed, certainly a very family man indeed. It means a lot to him, as we can tell. He brought his daughter on. Frankie Chen picks up another trophy to add to his cabinet. He's had quite an interesting season as well. He's got a second place that he can add to that. He's got three previous podiums finishes, so this will be his fourth. And Alex Jung, that all-important podium finish. He needed to get that. It might be the smallest trophy, but certainly it puts him in a good position to challenge for the championship tomorrow. Four points separate Alex Jung and Andre Kuto. Andre Kuto has the advantage point-wise, but will carry a 60 kilogram weight penalty compared to Alex, who will carry a 20 kilogram weight pen penalty for the final race of the season. Both of them will once again start from the front row of the grid. Andre Kuto on pole, Alex Jung right next to him. It's going to be a very, very interesting finale indeed. It's going to be a race to decide the championship. For now, though, we've got our top three finishers of the Audi R8 LMS Cup Race 11. And we've got a lovely Audi family joining them on the grid there. I'm sure some of those pictures will make their way onto these social media sites eventually. On the Instagram feeds, a couple of hashtags, Audi R8 LMS Cup. As we wait for the second podium presentation for the amateur class, there are of course three cups, three championships that run concurrently in this series. Of course, the main cup, and then there is the amateur cup competition, and of course, the Four Rings trophy, which is for the Audi distributors. Brilliant to end, brilliant way to end the season under the spotlight. Preparations for the second podium ceremony is just about to get underway. Three more drivers are going to make their way to the podium. It's always a very special moment coming to the checkered flag and then coming up to the podium. It is a feeling of immense pleasure and happiness. No driver. As we see the lights here at the Yas Marina circuit, it is a brilliant facility indeed. It has impressed most of the field who've actually made their way here for the first time. And here we go, on the top step of the podium, Ashraf Dewal, he's the winner of the Amateur Cup. It's a great way to finish the season for him. Second in the overall championship standings and this will further cement his place. Great result there for Ashraf Dewal great way to finish the season I was talking to him earlier and asked him just how he goes about learning a circuit that he doesn't know and he said he actually went out and bought a video game and basically spent hours driving it just to familiarize himself with the entire <laughs> with the entire circuit just so that he knows you know where the corners are it's quite important for them coming into the circuit and having no real race experience on it but if at least they understand where the corners are it helps play into the, uh, the way they attack the circuit they can focus on the racing and driving the car when they actually get into the car but the, sim the, the playing the games actually give them an idea of where the turns are by the looks of it they've got 
to share the spoils there on the podium with the leftover bubbly that was left on the grid for them. <laughs> well, there you go. He's obviously not going to be um, using that without washing it for tomorrow's race indeed. <laughs> it's going to be... It's going to be in need of a wash. But good news there for Ashraf Dewal making his way to the podium, winning the race in the amateur category. Sung Jin Zhu joins him and Ting as well, all completing the podium for the amateur class. And the big picture there, Shin Ting and Sung Jin Zhu. Nice big lovely smile for the cameras there as the drivers pose. And race 11 in the bag. We have our winner. It is Andre Couto. That win doesn't just take him to the top of the standings. He now has a four place, a four point advantage over Alex Young going into the final race. He's going to be starting from pole position and he will have a 60 kilogram ballast compared to Alex Young, who's going to be starting in second position and will have only a 20 kilogram ballast. This championship is going to be decided between these two drivers. Will it be Alex Jung? Will it be Andre Couto? We will find out tomorrow when they take to the track for the final time this season. It's going to be an all-important race and certainly one you won't want to miss because not only are they going to be racing around the Yas Marina circuit, they've already done the night race. They're going to do a twilight race tomorrow. For now, that's the end of the round 11. And it's back to Sophie down in the pit lane. What a fantastic race ended here on the Yas Marina F1 circuit in Abu Dhabi. And of course, with the wins of Andre Couto, the overall driver standing is getting more and more fierce and competitive. And the final question is, who can be crowned as the champion of the 2014 Audi RA LMS Cup? And the question will be answered in tomorrow's race. See you back here very soon tomorrow. Bye.